Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we are working on the cover of Sir Vagabond in Japan. And I am going to use what's called rice paper. I'm actually not sure that this is really rice paper, but it's um, a very thin tissue-like paper that has fibers uh, in it. And I'm going to use that on the spine. This is going to be my first time using this material. So bear with me if I struggle a little bit. So basically I'm going to start on this side and bring the paper in right up to um, my hinge. And then I'm going to pull it tight or actually glue the other side and then uh, roll this around and then cut it to size. But first thing I want to do is get down, <clears throat> excuse me, get down this tab. So the rice paper itself, I'll show you, is this. So it does have an orientation, but because there's nothing else in my book, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm just going to lay it in and then the based on how I lay it in, that is going to become the orientation of the book. And then everything else will get installed in the book based on the spine orientation. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm using something called uh, PVA Natural glue and it's a it's a type of glue that's uh, highly recommended for book binding i don't have a lot of experience with it um and i just bought it on my own but i thought um it would give me a little bit more flexibility uh getting this down um versus the art glitter glue which can dry uh, almost too fast for this process i think so <clears throat> The other thing that you can use is any kind of a, a decoupage kind of adhesive. Um, Mod Podge, I think, is used quite frequently uh, in this process or using this material. And I can tell right now that I am definitely going to need a wipe as I go through the process. So if you're not familiar um, with a quiet paper cat, the Quiet Cat Paper Company, I said that out of order, uh, she uses rice paper extensively in her projects. So you could, I'm sure, go over there and learn a lot more about this than what you're going to learn from me right now because <laughs> she's had a lot of experience with it. So there we go. So now the, the first part is pretty much intact. So that'll be the beginning. I can tell I need a little more glue here. So this project is also going to have um, a box with it, and um, there is going to be on the lid, I'm going to also feature uh, rice paper. <clears throat> Oops, I keep picking up the wrong one. Now I'm going to use a spatula to spread this around. <clears throat> so I think Ranger makes a product. Um, there's Mod Podge. Um, any typical white glue, you can um, thin it out a little bit with uh, water. And like I said, I'm just using a pH neutral PVA glue. this process. You could also use a brush to do what I'm doing. A paintbrush, I mean. You want to be careful not to go too thick because you don't want your cardstock that you're gluing it to to warp in any way. So I'm just checking to make sure it's I don't have any buildup coming around the corner. <clears throat> oh, you know what? So I can tell you right now I'm very disappointed because it, oh no, sorry, I thought it was peeling. Actually, the paper is so thin that the glue is coming through. And that's fine because I'm going to cover this uh, with adhesive when I'm done. <laughs> At first I thought it was tearing, but it's just glue coming through. Okay, now the next thing is, you know, coming up with our line to cut. So I'm going to push this up here, create a crease, and then I'm just going to hand cut the paper. Okay. 
Easier said than done. I gotta come off the edge of the paper uh, table to cut. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use my straight edge. I don't know why I didn't think of that first. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna add some more glue. paper is really, really thin. So it'll sort of mold around things if you want it to. Okay, now it turns out I just cut off uh, this much if you wanted there's enough of this to go between each one of the spines I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that it's not something I even do with designer paper typically but there's certainly enough left over so this was a pack of the um, rice paper so I'm using one on the spine and then I'm also going to use um, one no two on the uh, box so the box is going to have a fancy lid to it, and that's where this is going to get used, okay? So the other thing you could do if you wanted was run strips on either side here. Now we are going to add designer paper here, so I think I'm going to skip that too. Now the next thing I'm going to do is come back over and add um, some uh, adhesive to the cover and then let all of this dry before I start decorating the rest of it. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna use my fingers. Now the paper is very thin, so it's gonna go, um, it's gonna penetrate. <clears throat> so I'm anxious to see how this holds up over time. And also I'm anxious to um, really see what happens to the spine over time with this. And I'm using this PVA glue and I would say that it, it could be even thinner. So that you get a nice thin coating. Okay, come, come over the edges where you know you're gonna get some wear and tear. And then I'm going to take a break while this one side dries. And I think I am going to um, water it down a little bit and see if I can't find a brush. Okay, while I took a break and thinned out my glue a little bit, I went ahead and just covered the rest of the rice paper um, with uh, the adhesive. And I'm letting it dry right now. And then we're going to get started decorating it. And I think it's tacky enough that I can um, go ahead and open it up and get our inside liners in. So I believe I have those turned out. <laughs> and they are inked. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. I use two of the 12 by 12 collection packs. So you'll have two of these identical. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go right like that. And then the other one will go on the other side. And then I'm gonna switch back to my art glitter glue. <clears throat> and then I'm going to set this aside for a little bit and let the uh, rice paper dry thoroughly before I start decorating the front. <clears throat> 
and adding the pages. <clears throat> Excuse me. Making sure I'm putting them both in the same direction. Yep. Okay, so there's our inside liners and our spine is decorated. I'm going to set this in front of a, a fan, let it dry out. When we come back, we're going to uh, add the pages. Well, do I want to add the pages? I think I am going to add the pages next and then decorate the cover. Back soon. Okay, I'm back and um, our spine is dry and it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I've chosen uh, the, the cover um, and this is from the 8x8 collection, 8x8 uh, backgrounds. And that is going to be the base for our page. And then I'm using, which reminds me, I think I need to update my material list, die cuts. <clears throat> die cuts and chipboard both <clears throat> okay so that's in so I have to look at each of these separately these are both from the die cut and I've inked the edges. I've also put some chipboard on the back because I'm going to have them at different levels. This is also a die cut. Did I say chipboard? These are all die cuts. <laughs> is that right? I think it is. Yes, that is correct. So these are all die cuts. Um, none of these are the chipboard. You can tell because the chipboard ones have adhesive on the back. So the, the base layer is going to have the pagoda. We're going to layer Sir Vagabond on here, and then we're going to layer her, uh, the Lady Vagabond, or I don't know what they call her, but right here, I guess, a geisha. Um, so she's the one that's going to be the furthest forward, and part of the reason I did that is because she actually looks visually like she's closer. So there's two layers of chipboard on the back of this. There's a single layer on half, because he's going to sit on top of the pagoda. So that's what I've done. And this is just spare chipboard left over from um, when I made my album covers. So we're going to lay it down in the order, um, the lowest point, then the midpoint, then the high point. So let's get this lined up to where we want it visually. And I think we want the pagoda over here a little bit further. And then, sorry. Everything's moving, shifting on me. Let's see. Okay, that's as far over as he can go because of the chipboard. And then she can come over just like that. So that's roughly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get the pagoda down first, and then we're going to add some additional embellishments. So it looks like that's my mark point for the pagoda. Now the chipboard pieces, I've noticed, um, they come a little bit bowed. I think when they're pushing them out of their 
die. Um, they get bowed slightly. So when you go to glue it down, just hang on to it for a minute to help, help it flatten out. And you'll, you'll know what I mean the first time you open one of the packs. It's not drastic, but there is a chance that one of the points or tips doesn't go down completely. So just press it into place, hold it for a second. Okay, so the next thing is going to be Sir Vagabond. And he's going to go in right about there. So I'm going to put plenty of glue on this because chipboard's very thirsty. And I want a few minutes to mess around with this to figure out where he's going to go. <clears throat> I like it, so I'm going to straighten him out, press him into place. Okay. So again, I've only got chipboard on this side because he's laying directly on top of the pagoda which gives us lift on the other side. So I'm just going to hold him in place for a second. And this is the last large element. Then we're going to add some other interesting bits. He's not sticking to the pagoda, so i got to hang, hang tight. i got to get a little more glue here. Okay, I'm going to hold that for a second. Okay, that seemed to have done the trick. When I got glue all over my desk. What do you do? What do you do? Okay, and I'm just lining her up with the bottom of the uh, decorator paper here. Okay. So I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see. So the dimension here so you can see that's directly on the cover he's popped by one layer of chipboard and she's popped by two layers of chipboard that looks lovely now when I put the chipboard I just put a piece here and a piece here so it's like a T so that I could slip this under and it have not interfere okay so that's in that looks nice now I've got a couple other pieces. I'm going to add my tape back in here to give it some lift. <clears throat> so I've got um, some additional pieces of chipboard that I liked. Then I also cut this strip out and I'm going to use this strip to soften the edge between um, the paper and the, um, the designer paper and the rice paper. Gosh, I was having a hard time with my words. I should have probably done this before I put him down, but I don't think my chipboard comes all the way out on him anyway, so I think I'm going to be able to easily tuck it under. Maybe not as easy as I thought. Not happy with that. We're gonna do that again. Oh, pull that back up. Okay. It did not go in the way I expected. I wanted it over further. I'm happy with. Okay, there we go. I'll let that dry. Now I've got these chipboard flowers, which I think I want to um, apply up here. I think it's just going to add a little flair. A couple more pieces, and then I'm trying to decide if I want to use this fan somewhere. That's the other thing I could do is layer the fan and the flowers. So I'm going to fuss around with this a little bit more and finalize this design. And um, I'll be back soon to show you uh, 
what I've decided to do uh, with the rest of this. Now we still need to cover the back and I have this beautiful uh, image and I just can't see it go away so I'm going to put this on the back and if you'll notice there's the wave crest which is also in the base of the uh, cover. So it does draw these two backgrounds together so I'm, I'm okay with using that even though it is such a striking uh, image I wouldn't usually put it on the back of an album but I, I just really I really like it so hang on I'm gonna trim it down and we'll lay this down together okay so I've selected this image and it is from the 8x8 collection pack and honestly you could go either way this crest is on the front um, but this is such a striking image I'm not using it um, really anywhere else I might uh, apply a chipboard piece inside the book but I just really think it's such a striking image. I almost put this on the cover, but then I started looking at the chipboard pieces, sorry, die cut pieces, and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't let go of them. They, they add so much dimension and I really like that. So, so that's how I'm solving the problem. I'm using this on the back and I used my die cuts on the front and sorry, I keep mixing those two terms up, die cuts and chipboard. What's on the front is die cuts. <clears throat> okay, so that pretty much takes care of the majority of the cover. I am going to add a little something else because uh, it needs a little more oomph here. Um, I just don't know what that is yet. I'm going to go through my, um, my scraps, my labels, my tags, and try to make some decisions about that. There's these three wonderful chipboard tags um, that look great too. I don't know. It might be too much. I think they're a little bit too big. Uh, for that space, um, but I definitely it needs something in this corner. So I'll work on that when I get back together I will share with you guys what I came up with 